Aloha, kakahiaka. Welcome to New Thought Center of Hawaii Sunday morning, October 11th, 2020 presentation. We're coming to visit you at 10 a.m. Hawaii time. And we're so happy that you're all here to join us wherever you may be in the world. So the, we're excited to have Jim Carey as our guest speaker today. He is the original Jim Carey, he says. He's the first. And we have Mahina and Randy with Kona Moon, who are going to be playing the music for us today. And I'd like to invite them now to please sing us a song. Okay. Aloha, everyone. Hope you're all having a good day. No? Shoot. Thank you. That was so beautiful. So for those of you who haven't visited New Thought before, we are on the big island of Hawaii in Kealakekua, Hawaii, which is a rather historical and famous place in the Hawaii Islands. And we are a little bit different than most church organizations that in that we have each week a different speaker, presenter, and a different facilitator, which is what I'm being today. And we have different musicians who come and share their wonderful gifts of music with us. So each week is a new adventure, and we are always excited to take that adventure with whoever decides they want to share their gifts. And we're looking for new gifts. So if you are out there and you want to become a part of the New Thought family, please let us know. So this New Thought has been around, we're almost 50 years old. <laughs> and we'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary next year. So we're not a new dog on the track. We're a... Uh, we're... <laughs> We share aloha. We share aloha in the deepest way. And I am really excited this morning to have um, our speaker that's here today because he shared with me at Unity. So before we start all that, let's all get centered and um, close our eyes and just take some deep breaths. And we're going to do a meditation prayer. So... Ah. Ah. 
And from the center of my being, I recognize the one that is all that is, that divine presence, that spark, that creative force that creates all that is. I am so at peace and at one with this being, with this force, with this power. It is within me, it is through me, it is who I am. And as the creation of this force, I speak my word today that a blessing goes out to the, all the world, one of healing, one of peace, one of forgiveness, one of respect, one of kindness, one of aloha, that we may all know the deep, tender, beautiful source of our being, that we may all touch that source within us and allow it to express through everything we think, say, and do. We give thanks for all the blessings that we have received and that we are yet to receive. And we know that it is done according to our word, and we let go, and we let God. <sighs> so this morning, um, I'm going to share a reading with you from the Science of Mind magazine. And it's a reading that was created, a, a writing that was created by Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of the Science of Mind, or, or um, I forgot the new name. <laughs> I'm entrenched in the old ways. Okay, it's called Recreation. Every thought or belief that I have ever held that has in any way limited my full expression of God is now rendered powerless by my word. This was written by J. Arthur Twain. If we wish to demonstrate supply, we would not say, I am a multimillionaire, but we would seek to realize the infinite. Substance is limitless supply. We would say, I am surrounded by pure, perfect, Spirit, perfect law, divine order, limitless sub substance, which intelligently responds to me. It is not only around me, but is also in me. It is around and in everything. It is the essence of perfect action. It is perfect action in my affairs, and daily I am guided by divine intelligence. I am not allowed to make mistakes. I like that one. I am compelled to make the right choice at the right time. There is no confusion in my mind, no doubt whatsoever. I am certain, expectant, and receptive. As a result of statements such as these, we re-educate our mind, recreate and redirect the subjective thought which describes what is going to happen to us. And because of the subjective state of our thought often contradicts our conscious desires, a sense of doubt arises. When we affirm the presence of good, any sense of doubt is but, sorry, but an echo of pre precious experiences. 
It is the judgment according to appearances which we must be careful to avoid. For unless we are conscious that we are dealing with a transcendent and creative power, how can we expect to demonstrate at all? Good question. We must never lose sight of the power. This is from Ernest Holmes' book called Think Your Troubles Away. I like that title. So if you'd like to say after me, this is the daily affirmation. Today, I proclaim my divine inheritance. So all together, today, I proclaim my divine inheritance. So now I'd like to have Mahina do another song for us. We're going to do Ikona, welcoming our new friend to the islands. You know, it just says there is no place like Kona where the fair weather clouds reflect to the skies. And whenever you come to Kona, you are filled with so much aloha and welcome. And that's what the author was trying to portray in this song. Thank you, Mahina. That was beautiful. And I forgot to thank you earlier for the song, Malie. My newest granddaughter, great granddaughter, was just born uh, about a week ago, and her name is Malie. So it reminded me of her. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. So now I get to introduce my new friend and guest speaker, Jim Carrey. 
Um, I'm so happy that I got to spend time with him as a guest speaker at Unity Church, which was a lot of fun. And he, uh, he kind of is like the permanent facilitator at, at Unity, I think. <laughs> he's very talented in a lot of different ways. And today he's going to be sharing Mana i Loko Hanu. And that means breathing into energy. And it's all about the ha, which I'm always saying. So it's all about the breath, because that is the most sacred tradition in Hawaii, is the breath. And Jim has had a very interesting life. He grew up with his father, who was a trucker, and who, um, wow, let's see. <laughs> he grew up in the cab of a truck, traveling over 48 states with a yogi father, and what he called the silent ha, driving meditations and yoga healing. He studied energy work and has practiced as a Reiki master for 30 years. Now he is Uncle Jim, doing Hawaiian history and storytelling, tour guiding, and public speaking. And he has this beautiful voice, so you're going to get to really enjoy that in just a moment. He's going to share his journey with us today, and as well as um, sharing about the ha. So I would like to now, at this point, turn it over to Jim. Well, thank you, Pompo Mikey. I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you guys today. Can you all hear me okay with the wind blowing in my background? Okay. Well, it's the breath of the energy, and it's like uh, living in this present breath. And it's like there is only one point of power in our lives, and that's the point of this present moment. And there's no such thing as a bad experience it was one of the lessons my father taught me because you have no control of what the future holds in the past that becomes our story and so with every experience you has been a step into your next moment of now and so taking a breath we can all take a breath together and we hold that breath is a moment we're sharing and our experiences, our perspective of that moment is from all our different perspectives. And so what it was for me was something different for you, but it was the same thing that we experienced. So as many people there are in the world, our paths to this truth, because everybody's on their own path and it's their experiences that move them forward in those paths. So as we take these moments of breath, it's Hanu, the breath and the ha and the aloha. And I found language connections in my studies and I first came here in 2002, I found myself inspired in a 10 day visit that I knew this is where I wanted to live. This is where I wanted to retire. Growing up in the cab of a truck, I was 11 years old when we hit the road, 1972, and my trucking family, we were called the first trucking family in America. And it was an eclectic childhood but it was the family trauma that put us on the road. And the one trauma leads you in a new path. And my family's trauma was led into a new path and we ended up outside of society. And to why, why were the questions my parents were asking, sent them on a spiritual journey and into Eastern beliefs, so Yogi and Paramisha Yogananda and the, the Akrara Yoga. And so my parents were doing headstands in yoga and rest areas as the traffic was going by as a child. And it was a whole different world to grow up in. So to miss a moment was to be a tragedy. And my father felt it was never to miss a moment. And these are some of the things that I've carried. Because if you miss a moment, it's gone and you can never recapture it. And the lesson that might have been in that moment will have to be repeated over and over again until you get the lesson as everything is in divine design and comes to us for a purpose but nobody knows what that purpose is and so growing up in the truck stops i learned really young how truckers are all trying to think of the most cockamamie story they can conceive of finding somebody gullible enough to believe it well i recognized that at nine ten years old and i 
chose, I made a choice conscious in my mind that I would not participate. If I didn't have something real to say, I wouldn't say anything at all. And so the conversations in the cab of a truck with my father who studied uh, uh, yoga sutras of Patanjali, a uh, spiritual path to awakening and the breath work, the pranayama and what he called the silent ha. And everybody takes the big deep breath but when you exhale, you make the sound. But he taught me to make no sound is to hold the mana, the power. In India, it's prana, similarities in the language, mana, prana, that comes through the breath. And so in a concentrated breath exercise, I learned to drive 18 wheelers at 13, 14 years old, practicing breath work. He called it driving meditation. He taught me to inhale a full yogic breath for a count of eight, hold it for 32, and then exhale 16, twice as long as you inhale, and then hold completely empty for eight count, it takes one minute per breath, and at 60 miles an hour, it's one breath per mile. In a concentrated breath control, and three breaths in a row of this pattern builds the prana energy. And he said the breath, is, it holds power, but it's not the oxygen that you're holding. When you hold it, the mana, the prana, absorbs into your cells, and it fills your cup, and then you push it out and we would push it out to the traffic. We would push it out to the forest. We would push it out to the beautiful views. And so learning to live aloha as a child, I recognized it when I first came here. Where else do, can you go that people treat other people according to their energy, the, the, the spirit of God, which is aloha. The ha is the breath, Allah, alahim is the word for God in Aramaic and the Hebrew. And these are language connections that come down through the migration of the Polynesians. The more I got inspired, the more I studied, I got deep into the archives of the Bishop Museum. It was the connections between the Indian philosophy and the Hawaiians, but uncorrupt for thousands of years in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, it was held pure. Without the interactions of, of other wars and battles, like the other cultures have experienced, but all recognized within the Kumalipo, the creation story, the begat, begat, begats, these changes and interactions that happened to them. So when war came from King Ka'a'o from Tahiti that brought in four gods, human sacrifice, the changes came with kings addressed, added to their system. The pre-King Ka'a'o was aloha as the root of the whole belief system where everybody treats everybody according to their energy. And don't ever mistake aloha for, an, uh, for a, uh, an attitude cops an attitude. It's not a weakness. And so I've seen people uh, receive aloha and respond with a chip on their shoulder and get knocked down in the street just as quick as they could have been accepted for releasing those past experiences, coming with an open heart and open mind to accept these people for who they are. And what an honor it is to be able to share the aloha to as many people as I can. I found it inspiring for me. And so I started working the big bus tours. And the children would come from Maui, Kauai, and Oahu. Fourth grade students, I had 57 students on my bus. And the kumus, the teachers teaching me how to teach the children, I learned right away how to say the name of the queen correctly, because I butchered it the first time. It's Queen Liliuokalani. Because when you got to make sure you do it right when, you, when you're sharing the Hawaiian culture. So if I ever make mistakes, I'm always open for correction. I want to do these things right, but it's my kuleana ikapono. In Hawaiian, the kuleana is responsibility, ikapono, to be righteous in that, to share this culture to the best of my ability. And I'm humbled by the acceptance that I've received from these people as my ohana today. And so to be able to share some of that, it's it's just amazing. So I remember when I first visited in 2002 and I first recognized the Aloha spirit. We got off the airport in Hilo and we're driving along at night, the first traffic light, the light turns red. And the car pulls up next to us was a convertible top down, kids in the back yelling and screaming. They just got out of a movie, all excited. We were 
so surely excited to be here. And you can see the excitement in the cars were talking back and forth. Well, everybody else behind us could have seen it too. Evidently they did, the light changed uh, green and nobody blew their horn, nobody moved. We finished the conversation and then everybody moved up at the same time. In that 10 day visit, I had experiences with the locals and Uncle Roberts. And finally, I started to understand a little bit about the sovereignty movement and the Hawaiian culture, the plight that I had never been taught. This was a whole different history from what we learned in the history books. And so working with the school kids, I had to learn that history correctly. And the stories, the legends, Uncle Jim for a thousand fourth graders today. And the legends of Maui come from Rainbow Falls in Hilo. And how many tourists go and see Rainbow Falls but have never heard the stories? And now that Disney come out with the movie Moana and Maui, I don't have to explain so much who he is. But this predates uh, the whole original Superman. Kids from Auckland, New Zealand, they're piping up, oh, Uncle Jim, Uncle Jim, us Maoris also tell stories of Maui as the fisher of islands, as the, the battler of the 12-eyed bat and bring fire to the people. But he was born in that cave under Rainbow Falls. Maui Island gets his name from him. And they have a Maui Island off the south shore of South Island, New Zealand, named after this Hawaiian Superman. But it predates any old Clark Kent by more than a thousand years. The original stories of Superman were stories of Maui. Fascinating legends as they come into grips with the kids. I didn't know the legend my first tour. And so the teacher says, do you know the legend of Maui? And I says, no. <laughs> I had to be honest, I don't. And so he went and walked the kids around Rainbow Falls. I got on the internet. I read the story and the kids got back. I, I did the story of Maui at Bornham underneath the cave at Rainbow Falls and how Maui Island gets its name. And so embracing their culture, they've embraced me. Working with kapunas and coming from Ka'u and telling stories to the children, auntie pulled me to the side and said, Uncle Jim, I got a story to tell you that's not in any storybooks. Now this is gold. She told me the story of the evil kahuna of Ka'u and what was known as the Hawaiian death prayer chant. Stories of kahuna. And in the archives of the Bishop Museum, I found many stories of kahuna, stories that were walking on water, stories of kahunas doing things like Jesus did or Indians, yogis of India, and it's the mana. The mana built through chanting, perfect breath control over pools of water, making no ripples is the building of the mana. So the better you control your breath, the more mana power you have. And so when a weightlifter goes to lift that big heavy weights, he takes three or four nice big breaths and he holds it. And as he makes his lift, he controls the exhale and all that power goes into his lift. And we can use the same power. The only thing holding us back is our thinking. And our thinking becomes our cross. And so step aside of that, you are the thinker. And when you become the thinker and you recognize that spirit within through the meditation and you touch base exactly where I was going to go with the meditation, because it's through the self and seeking the self, there is no book and there is no holy place. You can find that. Only place you can find that is within yourself. And so coming to the island here has changed my life from 40 years and 4 million miles over the road trucking with no home. And many times we had no residence at all. And so finding myself at a young age on the road, I, I always ask why, why, why? Why am I beating my head against the pavement? But having life experiences that brought me to who I am right now, doing these things that I'm doing right now, gives that whole life's journey a purpose a perspective of life that it could not have been arrived at from any other perspective. And with a kuleana responsibility, we all have through our breath to bring the God's greatest good to our next moment because we don't control the future and we have to live with our past. But if you learn from the past experiences, you move forward wiser, smarter into the next breath moment with the kuleana to make it better in some way. 
And so with that, if everybody could live with their breath to become better in every moment, our collective consciousness will grow. And when you seek that space within, it's boundless. That space within has everything that is within it. It, it can't die. It has no boundaries. It is what we are. And we are that spirit coming down through different clouds. You came down through one cloud, made you female, made you Protestant, Catholic, yogi, whatever, male. Uh, all these different types are, are just perspectives. And the Hawaiian culture teach this in the most fascinating story of their history, the whole of my Pele chant. The whole of my Pele chant is two and a half minutes of chanting, fast, furious chanting, but it tells the whole story. And it tells in Kauna, meaning of the story, layers within the whole of my Pele chant, because it tells the whole geography of the formation of the islands as the whole aspect of the most dramatic volcanic eruptions they've ever experienced. What was marked in the Kumalipo as 1400 eruptions identified by the geologist was the, um, uh, I'm sorry, I wanna say it right, uh, Aikaau eruption. The Aikaau eruption lasted for 60 years, 1430 to 1490. And that eruption destroyed the whole east side of the island. The trauma from Ka'u past Hilo was all destroyed. Orchid Land, Paradise Park, that was all created in that eruption. Puna was completely destroyed. The, the tragedy, that trauma, and how do we heal from the traumas of life is taught today by psychologists, by being able to tell your story. The story is being told in the whole of my Pele. Why, might you ask, do they have an eight-eyed pig demigod? Eight-eyed pig. Has anybody ever seen an eight-eyed pig? But if you look at the experience, the trauma from eight different perspectives, the parents' perspective, the grandparents' perspective, the political situation, this situation, and each experience has multiple perspectives. To seek out the multiple perspectives of an eight-eyed pig so you could better understand that it wasn't personal. It wasn't about me that this happened. It was the bigger picture. And to understand that the trauma can be healed through the telling of the story of the whole of my Pele, this culture heals itself through these stories. And it's an amazing thing to see. This came to me as an epiphany just about two years ago. It hit me like a brick in the head. I've been telling the story of the whole of my Pele for seven, eight years, and now it hits me. But that's just like the stories in the Bible. Over and over we read them, and all of a sudden it makes sense. And that's the stories of our lives. Over and over we live them, and all of a sudden they make sense. So I think I'm about out of time, but I just wanted to share one of the legends of, of the Kona district. And the legends of Makale. Up above the Kona airport is the Makale. Makale golf course, but this legend is about the cave of Makale. It's an ancient legend, and Makale was a young boy, five years old, and his family came from Maui Island. They settled here on the Kona coast, and they settled in to a property, Malka, a Kona, Makale's area. And as the family was getting settled in, the ch a child Makale was playing in the back where they were throwing their garbage in this little hole area. And so the father was off working in the, making fields grow. Well, Makale got a puff of wind that hit him in the face and startled him. And he went to run to tell his father, five-year-old boy, daddy, daddy, what's going on? The ground is breathing. The father comes to where he, the Makale shows him and digs out the rocks and finds the entrance to a cave. It's a secret lava tube. Well, the drought is coming into Kona and all the other locals are now starting to struggle for, for water. Well, Makale's cave was hidden and his father worked at night and put the dugout canoes into this cave. And through the night, the dripping of the water from the ceiling of the cave would fill these canoes. And well, as the rest of the village now was becoming more and more drought ridden and the parched and needed water, Makale's family was prospering. The villagers started to get angry. What, are you stealing the king's reserves from the king's lava tubes? 
So the challenges came and Makalei's family left. They fled the island, the big island, and went back to Maui. And time passed. Years later, the Makihiki season comes, the festival season, and Kona is now celebrating the gifts as Pleiades rises in the sky. The advent of the three-month festival season takes place. Makalei comes from Maui Island. Makalei is participating in the sporting events, the halua sledding, the surfing, the javelin throwing, all the spear throwing, all the competitions. Makalei is besting the local boys. And again, it's very dry and hot in the Kona and he's looking for something to drink and no one would give him anything to drink. And as he gets thirsty, how can you expect me to perform without something to drink? And the villagers getting more and more angry, Makaleg stands up and boasts that he can get water for the whole community. And if the king would offer his daughter, he would bring the community the water. The king gets word of the boast. And Makale is now put to the challenge. Makale goes to his old homestead, digs out into the cave and where the tubs of water, the canoes of water were stored, brings them out and nourishes the whole festival. The son, the, the daughter of the king is now his and Makale becomes Ali'i royalty. Little did he know from the trauma of being chased away that someday it would make him to be a greater, a king. And so the experiences of the past are unknown but move forward in your lives with the knowing for God's greatest good will be done. Destiny will happen. And let me leave you with the thought of, of just love. Share the love and the gratitude in the whole Pono Pono prayer. Love and gratitude is all we need to breathe in the love and exhale with gratitude into our next moments being Kuleana Ikapono righteous in that responsibility. Thank you, my friends. Hello, Jim, that was beautiful. So. Truly a pleasure, thank you. Yeah, I just uh, don't know where to go from here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think we're going to head into another song in just a moment. Um, so this is uh, the time of the program where we all get to be in gratitude to Jim and to New Thought Center and offer our gifts, our financial gifts. And there's several ways you can do that. Um, we need to keep our lights on, we need to keep our bills paid, and we need to keep these programs happening to help keep us centered and focused on spirit and who we are in spirit. So there's several ways. First, you can go to our website at www.newthoughtcenterofhawaii.com, and there is a link to PayPal on the homepage. And you do not need to be a PayPal member to make a donation that way, but you can use your credit card or your debit card to make a donation to New Thought. Another way is you can send a check to our New Thought address, which is also on our website. And a third way, which is um, kind of a fun way, that we get a small donation from Amazon. And if you go to Amazon and you sign up with them for the Amazon Smile account, every time you buy something, they will make a small donation to New Thought Center and it doesn't cost you anything. So it's just a big aloha from you to us through Amazon. So please consider that next time you go there. Uh, so now we're going to have some music from Mahina and Randy again and allow us to just absorb all that we've heard so far today and just allow it to sink into our bones and be, become a part of who we are.
So we do this for applause at New Thought Center so we don't break the energy that's been created. And this is the International Sign Language for Applause. And another way of doing it is you raise your arms straight up and do it, and that's a standing ovation. <laughs> just like we gave Randy just now. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Mahina. So beautiful. So we're going to have a few announcements. Um, and then we're going to be singing our closing song. And I invite you all to sing along. We're going to mute ourselves so we can hear their beautiful sounds and uh, sing Hawaii Aloha together. And the announcements for this week. Um, next Sunday is, again, um, the next two Sundays at least are going to be Zoom, um, Zoom creations. And the next Sunday is Adriana Atento. And she originally contacted me about nine months ago. And we have been working on getting her to back to the island to do this presentation. And she was coming. And then COVID happened. And then uh, she canceled. But then when she found out we were, had this alternative way of doing our services, she decided to join in again. So we're blessed to have her. She's an amazing speaker and she always brings so much. And her title is Creation, Creativity, and You. And Laura Prince, who is back east, I think North Carolina or something, is going to be doing the music. So we're going to have Somebody in Hawaii, somebody in California, and somebody in North Carolina <laughs> all on one show. So it's amazing the gifts that were being given to create a new way of having a Sunday service. And I am in awe of all of this. Um, the following week, we're going to have a Zoom sharing service. So this is for all of us. This gives us a chance to come in and share our miracles and share our ordinaries. It'll be a live Zoom, but it will not be recorded. So you feel free to say whatever is in your heart or whatever you would really like to say. And it's going to be on Sunday from 10 to 1130 Hawaii Standard Time. So please join us for that. And that's a way we can all say aloha to everyone, to see our friends we haven't seen for a long time. Maybe people on the mainland can come and join us as well. People that have moved away. I know we have one member in France who's always craving news about what we're doing and where we are. So put that on your calendar. That's October 25th. And then the following week on 11-1 is Kumu Kiala Ching. We're not sure since we're taking it one day at a time, one step at a time, dealing with the present in the present moment. We don't know how that's going to be, but he is going to be with us in some way or other. On Sundays, um, bless her heart, uh, Aaron Peoples is, has started up the... Um, crystal bowl healing meditations again and it's at nine o'clock it's live at um, every time we're not live on sunday every time we're recorded on sunday she will be live at new thought center at nine o'clock for a half an hour of the crystal healing bowls and she'll be on the lanai so they'll it'll be wide open spaces and lots of room Bring a mat to lay on if you want to lay down or there will be chairs for you to sit in and of course guidelines to follow but we all know what those are so bless her heart we're doing that and she was doing that this morning but we missed it <laughs> and she'll be doing it next week and the week after and possibly after that but we're not sure yet so just keep checking back with either our website or sign up to receive our newsletter, which you can see by clicking on the link to join the newsletter 
on our website, on our homepage. Um, I think that's about it. We also post on um, Dolphin Podners, which is a local community um, email group. And we also post on Facebook. So New Thought has a Facebook page, so please feel free to join us there. If you want to see any of the other programs or see people who have spoken here before at New Thought, we have been recording for months now. So the links for all of those are, again, also on our website on the events page. And you can just click on those and watch to your heart's content. Binge, binge watch New Thought Center. <laughs> Okay, I think that is all. I hope I've remembered everything. And we're so happy and full of joy and love that you've joined us today. And we hope you keep coming back, keep joining us, keep having faith that your inner being, your aloha, is always there to guide you and to give you direction and to bring you peace. So with that, we'd like to sing our closing song of Aloha. Aloha. Uh -huh.